So you want your primary care doctor to look into your testosterone levels. They don't do it often. How do you ask them to do it correctly the first time? Not all healthcare professionals are receptive to backseat doctoring, we'll say. For the ones that are, you want to make sure that you're asking for a total and free testosterone. This will include an SHBG as well. You want to get a luteinizing hormone. You want to get an estradiol level. And you also want to be getting yourself a PSA, just to make sure the prostate is healthy. So let's go into the details here. Free and total testosterone. The amount that is free is determined by your SHBG and albumin, two proteins that bind up testosterone. Why that's important is the free testosterone is what does everything. Total is everything circulating. Free is what is basically active here. So decisions should be made based Based on that free testosterone, but it's not always the most accurate assessment. So some doctors still use total. It's a, uh, you know, kind of personal choice here, though I lean towards the free on this one. Luteinizing hormone, its main purpose is tell us where the problem is coming from. This hormone is what your pituitary releases to tell the body to make testosterone. So if it is low, that means your low testosterone is coming from low signaling. If it is high, that means your brain is screaming at the body, the body's not responding, so it is a testicular issue. The machinery is not working. Estradiol is your main estrogen in the body. Estradiol's relevance here is that in most cases, symptoms are not from high estrogen levels. It also is prone to being falsely abnormal due to just the nuances of the cheap and dirty estrogen testing. So I don't put a ton of stock in this one unless somebody has symptoms of high estrogen levels. That's going to be most typically gynecomastia, a breast tissue development. That's like a nipple sensitivity or a lump feeling under there. Or if they have good libido, but bad erectile function, absent other obvious causes like diabetes, high cholesterol, smoking, and that kind of stuff. Your PSA. So prostate tissue, we're learning now, doesn't gain additional stimulation from increasing testosterone levels past a very certain not very high point. So we don't think that there's any sort of additional risk of prostate growth or prostate cancer when you're bringing testosterone above a basic starting point for most guys. So that is not a big concern of ours. We still track it because any sort of high rate of change of your PSA may suggest a problem with your prostate. And so it's worth getting investigated and we're already looking at men's health. So why not keep track of those sorts of things? One last nuance here. So besides regulating how much of your testosterone is free versus bound, SHBG kind of has a chaperoning function with your testosterone. So if you have low SHBG, you will have higher free versus total testosterone, but you're also going to turn it over faster. More gets converted to estrogen, and after, say, an injection of testosterone, you're going to clear that out of your system faster. So low SHBG is not always the goal. You want to add a nice kind of sweet spot there in the middle so that you're able to have good stability of your levels, but you still have some testosterone that is free to bind to receptors and give you the benefits of testosterone therapy.